G'day, it's Matt from Crank Engineering and I was talking to a guy on the phone earlier this week and he was asking me how you might repair uh, a triple tree that's got a little bit of road rash or road damage and what you might do to fix it up. So I thought oh, I'll shoot a video on this because this um, Sportster tree um, is going to be used on one of my project bikes and I want to do something similar. So I'll go through the steps um, that I'm going to go through, show you what I can. Uh, using basic hand tools and things you can buy off the shelf at your auto parts supply, nothing fancy like milling machines to mill this down or anything like that. Let's just use um, files and sandpaper and see how we go. So in this particular case, I've got to decide what features on this triple tree I want to keep and which ones can go. So on a 35mm Sportster front end like this, uh, the fork tubes are a taper fit into these holes so I don't want to damage these holes at all because the taper will uh, won't be right. Um, the headlight uh, is mounts from the top here on the eyebrow, uh, mounts underneath the brow which sits on here which screws in here. I'm not going to use those mounts so I'm planning on cutting these off and reshaping them. Uh, the bars uh, mount here uh, and on this on a sportster like this they're rubber mounted so there's some rubber bushes that sit in here but I'm going to do away with those. Um, and these little um, threaded sections here are for pinch bolts on the fork, so I need to leave those. On the bottom here, um, not too much to see, Harley part number. Uh, you can see a casting part line here. I can also see some gunky looking stuff in here. I think this has been welded at some point, and I can see some holes here, which would probably support that. So I'm wondering if I can get a file in there and just smooth that out. And I just noticed when I was looking at this just a second ago, is it's actually got a crack um, right there. You can see in the center of the screen. So I'd say I'm going to grind that and weld it and then smooth it after that. So that'll be an extra step I'll do um, for this particular part. But I just want to smooth it out. I'm not sure I want a mirror finish. I just want to clean it all up, um, make it look tidy. It's going to go on a, you know, a sort of 70s period style chopper so I just want to look like it, you know what you might have done back then so let's get to it so the first thing I might do in this particular case is um, give this part a clean now I've got a parts washer but um, failing that I'm just going to use a get a rag out and just uh, throttle body and carby cleaner or degrease I really like this stuff it does a great job of you know removing grease and things and it just basically you know washes it off not cheap, but if you haven't got a parts washer, it's definitely cheaper than buying a parts washer or having to sub it out to somebody else. So I'm just going to stick that on the rag, give this a shake, and spray away. Alright, so let's just quickly talk about some of the tools we might use on a job like this. And firstly, uh, the bench vice I'm using, I've got some uh, scrap aluminium angle um, over the top of the steel jaws, and that's just obviously to protect the part that I'm working on and not put any more scratches or scuffs in it from these very hard serrated steel jaws. So that's just, you know, that's a sacrificial piece of aluminium. To protect my workpiece. This is aluminium as well so it's very soft you can do a lot of damage really quickly um, and you may or may not be able to repair it depending on what you've done so I'm going to be very careful with this and uh, take it pretty easy. Next thing I'm going to need is um, some sort of abrasives that I'm going to use to smooth this surface down. Now if you've watched my video on metal polishing you'll see the use of wet and dry sandpaper um, and polishing compounds. So if you're going to go to a mirror finish, you might go that far. So we're just uh, going to use, we need to use varying, you know, uh, grades of abrasives to smooth this part out and make it, you know, smooth and shiny. So, you know, the starting point is um, probably files. And I've gone and shattered myself a couple of new files here because my original Nicholson's are getting up to about 20 years old. So um, you, need, you know, you need a, a selection of files. Um, this particular profile is a half round, so obviously, um, 
you know, if I use a flat file in a surface like this, I'm going to put a lot of gouges in it because I want to really want to match the, the profile of the part I'm filing. So I'd be using a half round or a round file if I had one. Half round is perfect for this job. So, you know, this is going to be good for around here. Um, the big flat files, and especially this guy here, this is um, a coarse cut bastard file is what it's called. Um, these things aren't cheap, this is about 40 bucks, but if it lasts me 20 years, I'll be happy and I will be looking after it. So there's a coarse cut and a medium cut file, so first cut and second cut. So, you know, these are quality instruments and, you know, they're cutting tools, you can buy the best you can afford and they'll last you a long time. And then I thought, um, because I couldn't get one in, in the the larger size from Barco, I bought another Nicholson and um, this is a fine mill saw bastard cut file which is for smoothing out. So that's a so for very coarse, coarse, you know, smoother and then we can move on to sandpapers and other abrasives after that. The other thing that I'll, I'll be using um, on this job, this is a file card and it's just used for cleaning the teeth of the file. So it's just, you know, steel bristles and you can see a bit of aluminium on that file and if I do that aluminium's gone so it's just for cleaning files you don't have to have one pretty handy the other thing is uh, just you know kids chalk you chalk up the teeth of a file like that and aluminium is less likely to clog in the file so if you've got that handy that helps too okay so the next thing so that's the really coarse abrasives after that, I might move to some sandpaper. So I keep my sandpaper in a storage container like this. It's just easy to keep it separated into the different grades that I've got. So this is all this black stuff is wet and dry paper. So uh, predominantly use wet for you know finer and finer smoothing. So if I use something like this uh, 80 grit, which is very coarse, I'm going to put a lot of scratches in there. I'm going to spend a lot of time smoothing it out. So I'm just going to be careful with my use of the sandpapers, I don't want to generate more work for myself. And then finally, I've started using these a little bit more recently, these um, abrasive scouring pads. You know, 3M generally make this type of material. Well, these are all probably knockoffs, but there's a you know fine, medium, and a coarse. And it's just like a scouring pad, but it is quite effective on aluminium. So um, I use these quite a bit too. I think they're great, they're not that expensive, I think 10 bucks for a pack of, I don't know, five or six of these in a couple of different grades. So what I normally do in a job like this is my Moray, these Moray ones are the coarse ones. These are, you know, a bit of a favorite. And, you know, just, you can even just get started and see how things are gonna go and do something really simple. Well, like clean up a surface like that. And hopefully that comes up in the camera, but you can see already that's made a vast improvement to the surface of the aluminium. So you've got to consider, if we're on circular or round surfaces like these edges, you need something that matches the shape of the part. If I use something flat like a file, I'm gonna destroy this shape. I don't wanna do that, I just wanna smooth it. So I could use sandpaper, but I'm gonna err on the side of caution and use these first and see how I go. And if I find I've got some marks like this one here, that haven't come out using the scouring pads, I'll go to something a bit more aggressive, like some sandpaper. These ones here, these lips that are on the top of the triple, I'm gonna uh, file those flat. I'm gonna probably cut these off with a hacksaw or an angle grinder, just rough cut them, and then use the half round file and try and maintain a nice line through here, right through there, and basically try and make these disappear. See if we can do that. I think we'll be able to. And then smooth it all out with sandpaper and then we'll go on to the scouring pads and if we really want to polish it up, we can use buffing compounds. So I'll get started. I think um, first thing I'm gonna do is, is cut these off. Just rough cut them. And obviously I don't wanna nick the surface under here that we would you know be smoothing up against because that'll just cause more work and it'll destroy the profile. So I really just want to cut it. I'll probably leave a couple of millimeters off. You could file these off. It wouldn't be a showstopper. In fact, with a soft aluminium and a coarse file, you could probably do that in a couple of minutes. So I might even do that and see how we go. So let's, uh, let's carry on. Okay, one thing I didn't mention with the files is on the edge of the file, one side has got teeth and one side doesn't. 
And that's to allow you to work up to a face that you don't want to damage. So this side with no teeth, teeth isn't going to damage this side here. This side will, if you're cutting with this side, you'll cut the side of the teeth. But on this side, you can use that. You can flip it over if you don't want to damage the side up against the, uh, the here that you're working against. So let's see how we go, just removing one of these headlight mounts just with a file. Again, so I've chalked it up, let's see how we go. Okay, you can see how slowly that uh, is, is being removed. You can also see if I slip and uh, I hit one side or the other of my triple, I'm going to put dints in it with a file. So I think I will go and cut these off, hacksaw or angle grinder, just rough cut them off, make things a little easier and probably speed them up too. Alright, so I've gone and cut these pieces off with the angle grinder and just roughly, you know, within a couple of millimetres of the surface here, I don't want to cut into the surface and cause a whole lot more work. So just cut them as close as I can and I'll get back onto the files and flat file here and try and smooth this off and then we'll go to the half round and just clean this bit up here. So I've just put this flat, it's a little bit easier when you're uh, filing, well I find it is, just to work flat rather than on an angle. So I've just moved this around to try and get it flat, so I'm going to shift the camera a little bit. Okay, so I just wanted to show you the progress so far, and I've filed pretty much all the way around here and I've used my two heavier files and the mill file on the flat sections and you can hopefully you can see in the video how much smoother it is here compared to the center here. We've only got one grade of half round file to follow that profile so I'm going to, have to do more work with sandpaper to smooth this out to make it the same as this. So if I had a really fine half round file like, or went and bought one I could probably save myself some sanding time in this area here by using a file. So this is the bottom and this is the top so next I'm going to work on the top and I want to I'm going to take these lips out here and I'll basically file that flat with the top of this surface here and I'll try and reinstate this curve all the way around here um, and just take out all these casting webs and things in here. So let's see how we go. So I'm going to mount a flat on the uh, vise now. I'll probably try and grab it around here and um, keep going. All right, so I've done about literally two hours of filing on this. So they've smoothed this whole top down, the front sides. I haven't spent too much time on the bottom because that's hidden anyway. I might just give it a quick buff with the... Um, with the abrasive, um, whatever you call that stuff. So now I'm going to um, sand this um, with varying grades of sandpaper and then polish it out and see how it looks. So I'm not going to cover that in this video because I've got another video up um, about polishing metal and it's just exactly the same process. So you know, I'll start with some maybe 80, then 180, then 240, 400, 800, 1000, 1200 and sand this out as, as, uh, as good as I can. Then I can hit with some metal polish. So. Um, there's probably another hour or two's worth of work to get that finished, so I'll uh, come back when we're done and show the finished product.